Um, so we've done a couple of things this year. In addition to doing voter registration drives and getting the word out about a lot of different elections, um, we've also hosted Eric Adams uh, one of uh, a few months ago. He's one of the candidates for mayor. And as that mayoral election um, gets closer, uh, we want to make sure that these candidates know about our community, they know our neighborhood. Um, we also held one of the first workshops on ranked choice voting. Um, this is the new way that New Yorkers are going to vote starting in 2021 and in this election for Council District 31. Um, just so you know how ranked choice voting works, when you go to the poll site, you're going to be, instead of picking just one candidate, you're going to be picking your top five candidates. You're going to be, say, you're going to be listing them in order of preference. And if no candidate gets more than 50% uh, of the vote, then they're going to do the average by looking at the second, third, fourth, and fifth choices um, to determine who the winner is going to be. So we want to make sure that we're educating all of our neighbors and we're, we're creating the most educated voters um, in New York City. Uh, we, uh, we also have uh, a lot of um, ideas that we'll talk about at the end of this for uh, 2021. Um, but I know uh, Mr. McDonald has joined us and, uh, and he can, um, he can uh, tell you a little bit more about that later on uh, this afternoon. Um, so Ms. Hill, do you want to take it over? You got to unmute. Hello. Yep, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, nice for you to join us on this Thursday evening after a blizzard snowstorm that came into New York City. But I'm glad you're able to join us. I have a few hot topics in the community, and I'm, I'm ga I gather it, it goes across the border for everyone's concern. One of my uh, issues is more hospitals because we see from COVID 19. Uh, we were, there was a big disparity in Southeast Queens, and we need to have more beds and more uh, uh, clinics, you know, small clinics in the community 24 7. Education is another key uh, uh, objective, moving education uh, access, and of course, more uh, te technolo te technical and vocal programs. I know we've been fighting this education issue for the past. 40, 50 years, but I'm hoping that something can be done in 2020 after this, after COVID and uh, people see the disparity in our community. Transportation is another one. Updated uh, bus lines and better trains and subways. Public safety. We have to address the rise in crime and ensure racial justice. More equitable funding for the community for community organization, senior programs, and of course, powers of the city council. That's a couple of, that's a couple of my issues I, I'm, 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 I'm putting forth with, with, to the community and we hope we can address those issues in the coming year. Thank you. Excellent. And I saw that Mr. McDonald joined us. Um, are you there, Mr. McDonald? No, he's not. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm on my phone. All right, we can hear you. And I like the red sweater. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so tonight, um, we, as, as you know, we have, a, we have a vacancy in Assembly District 31. Um, former council member Donovan Richards um, became our Queens Borough President. Um, and that's caused a vacancy. And the mayor has called a special election um, and that election will take place in the cold on February 23rd. Um, so prepare yourselves and your neighbors and your friends to go out despite the weather. And, uh, and prepare them to also um, go out and vote using the new method, which is ranked choice voting. Um, so uh, the way that uh, Council District 31, in case um, you don't know, um, on the mainland, it includes Rosedale, Springfield Gardens, Brookville, um, which is on the eastern half of, Council, of Assembly District 31. And then it goes into, it goes into the Rockaways. Um, and it includes a lot of the Rockaways, the majority of the Rockaways. 
And so the issues that the candidates are going to address tonight um, cover issues both on the mainland part of the district, it's going to cover uh, things um, on the Rockaways, and it's going to talk about, they're going to, um, we're hoping that they talk about some of the issues facing our city overall. And um, I just want to make sure that you understand what powers council members have. In New York City, council members get discretionary funding. This means they can allocate funding to local organizations in their district. Council members also get a vote on the New York City budget. The New York City budget is almost $90 billion, although we have a huge deficit this year. And council members, um, in that almost $90 billion um, budget, they make critical decisions that matter all across New York City, not just on their district, um, in their district. And so they will be one of 51 uh, members, and uh, they will be term, they will have a term, two terms. Council members also can vote on rezonings. And so a lot of rezonings have been in the news, including Amazon, uh, which was very controversial in Queens, and most recently in Flushing. Council members also have a big say in how the police department is run. They have a big say in which youth programs are funded and, and the rules around those things. Council members also have a big role to play in uh, our parks and their maintenance and upkeep. And they're also a check on the mayor. And so we have a mayoral election simultaneous um, with the city council election. And so our council member or your council member in District 31 is really um, going to be that voice um, and that legislative check on the mayor going into the new year. All right, are we ready to start? This is, uh, this is how we're doing it. We're going to go, each candidate is going to get 10 minutes total. Within that 10 minute time, the candidates will have three minutes to introduce themselves, talk about their platform, what their vision is, um, what they want um, vis uh, District 31 to look like. Um, then uh, we'll open it up, either myself, Mr. McDonald, or Faye is going to ask a question. And then all of you are going to have a chance to ask a question as well. Um, well, not all of you, but as many as we can fit into the 10 minute time. We're asking candidates to limit their responses to not more than two minutes after that, so that we can get in at least two questions from participants tonight. Okay, are we ready? Ready to go. Excellent. And please utilize the chat box. I'm gonna be monitoring that chat box to make sure um, that we get all of your questions. Okay. And I saw that, uh, the, is uh, LaToya here, LaToya Benjamin? LaToya, did you make it in? Is she muted? If you're, if you're muted, LaToya, I don't, I don't see you on the screen, um, but definitely unmute yourself. Okay, I'm back. Oh, no, you had gotten, okay, we're just waiting for LaToya. Um, and if, uh, if she doesn't join us, we're gonna go to the second person and go back to her. Is uh, Manny Silva on the, um, on the Zoom? Manny, are you there? I guess not. Okay, so we'll come back to him as well. And I did see Sylvina, Sylvina, are you there? Sylvina's here. Okay, Sylvina. Um, I will. Um, I will start. I mean, I will be the one um, uh, facilitating this part of the conversation with you. Um, I'm keeping a time um, a time log, and so you'll have three minutes to introduce yourself starting now. Thanks so much, and good evening, everyone. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Faye and Mr. McDonald for um, creating this space for us to come and speak before the members of the community. Um, I bring you all season's greetings. My name, once again, is Sylvina Brooks Powers. 
I am a, a lifelong Southeast Queens resident. I am a homeowner currently in Rockaways where I'm raising my family. Um, I live here with my husband and my young daughter. I have actually been serving the community I am looking to represent for the past 17 years. Um, I've held a number of positions, including working um, with, in the state government and city government. I've worked with uh, the labor union on two very important campaigns. One is the Fight for a Fair Economy, which gave birth to the Fight for 15 campaign. And I also worked on the Fight for 15 campaign, which was a global campaign to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour, such as what has taken place here in New York. Um, I've worked with the mayor's office to combat domestic violence, and currently I am working on the JFK redevelopment program, um, which is one of the largest infrastructure programs in the country at this time, um, with hopes that we are able as a community to leverage that program um, to create um, jobs for the community, as well as opportunities for minority and women owned businesses. And so, I'm super excited once again to be here this evening, um, just to give a little uh, backstory as to why I'm running for the city council. So it's not a decision that came about easily. It's something that I definitely prayed on and spoke with my family and members of the community about. Um, but early this year when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, it was an unfortunate reminder to how um, this district was impacted back when Sandy took place and um, how much of a reminder it was in terms of how under-resourced we are as a community. And so I decided that I would step out and come off the bench and, and look to serve the community in a different capacity, recognizing, as Richard said earlier, the, the city is faced with a significant budget deficit that's going to require someone that's able to go into City Hall on day one and fight for um, the resources that we need in a time where, um, you know, the finances are not all that great. Um, to be able to ensure that the community's voice is heard and to advocate on behalf of our community. Some of the, um, the critical issues that I have heard through the past um, several months in walking through the community and talking with members of the community have included um, public safety. We've seen an increase in assaults and gun violence in Springfield Gardens and Roseville and the Rockaways. Um, we've seen issues in terms of the equity in our schools where uh, a few months ago, the mayor had the nerve to say that 77,000 students were still without the proper resources to do their schoolwork. Just uh, which is, time check. Thank you. Um, and again, there's so many issues that's pressing in the community um, that I've heard firsthand. Um, I've worked tirelessly through the years to fill in the gap um, in my professional and personal um, capacity and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to earn in the support of the members here as well as the members in the community. So once again, thank you thank for the you. opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvina. Um, so I'll ask you the first question and then uh, we're going to open it up to the chat box. Um, a good idea of what those questions are is just taking a look at the chat box and there's a pattern it looks like. Um, okay. I want to know um, how are you, um, how will you address the rise in crime that we've seen as a result of this pandemic and a lot of people um, just being out of work? And how do you balance that with um, the need um, to bring equity and racial justice to our city after a summer, after a summer where we just cannot ignore um, the, the issues that are facing black residents in this city and their relationship with the police department? Absolutely. So this is a conversation um, that continues to happen, a much needed and, and overdue conversation in terms of racial justice. Um, as, at the same time, we're, we're in an awkward space as a community, considering that the very, um, the very agency that we depend on for safety, there's been um, a lot of issues in terms of trust between community and police and relations. So there is a lot of work to be done around that space. Um, in terms of looking at the, the crime that's been taking place, we need to start to look at the root causes also in terms of unemployment, mental health, and being able to invest in those areas um, to start to address um, those issues. It's my hope that we're able to look 
forward in terms of the jobs that are coming that will be hiring and to really um, reshape what our workforce development looks like in the community and get people into into jobs into um, mental health services if it's needed um, to be able to start to look at some of these challenges another issue is like food insecurity all of these compounding issues i feel um contribute to what we're seeing in terms of the spike in crime. But on the other side, going back to your, your point in terms of the, the racial injustice that um, exists between um, the policing dynamic, um, I've been having a lot of conversations and have already identified ways in which we as a community can start to address that situation more collectively and holistically, including um, more diversity in the police force and creating a community task force that looks at the, the hiring. I'm sorry. Sure, thank you. Um, thank you. So I'm looking at the chat box and um, there are a lot of questions about ranked choice voting um, from David Pecoro. And uh, he wants to know, how do you feel about ranked choice voting? And do you support it or do you support a delay in its implementation in this election and, and future elections? So I remember this question coming up when I attended the training that you all held a few weeks back. So in theory, ranked choice voting is supposed to be helpful. It's supposed to ensure that, you know, Someone who is able to be successful in a ranked choice election is someone that has built coalitions, coalitions across the district. The challenge right now that we're faced with is there has not been enough investments and efforts put into educating the community around ranked choice voting. So um, I am concerned about that. So as it stands right now, um, I'm very concerned about ranked choice voting going forward, considering that all of the effort that had been put into um, advocating and pushing for this um, vote to, to take place and be supported by the, the public, the same effort is not being put in place to educate the community on what that looks like and, uh, and to understand so that they understand that when they go in the ballot box, they have up to five people that they can vote for, as opposed to those who go in and still vote for one and what that all means. So um, th that's where my concern is and where I stand on ranked choice voting. Thank you, Sylvina. Um, Eugene Fallick um, wants to know if you'll support the Queens Rail this will connect the A train to the Long Island Railroad um, to Queens Boulevard um, that will uh, take an hour trip from Far Rockaway to Midtown Manhattan and make it less than 30 minutes um, via JFK Airport. Um, so I remember speaking with Eugene some time ago about it. That's been an issue that um, Eugene and a couple of others have been pushing for quite some time now. Um, it is something that I would look at the feasibility in, um, but it's hard to say right now in terms of what, what it would take to get that off the ground to say yes or no, but that is something I definitely would as a council member consider and look at the feasibility of. Thank you. Could I just correct the times on that? It's an hour to Manhattan and a half hour to JFK. No, I remember Eugene. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your advocacy around it. Um, okay. The last question, um, I'm not sure I understand it, but it says, what union, uh, Selvina? This is from uh, David Pecoro. I, I don't see the, the chat. It's going so quickly. So what, what's the question? Can you read it to David, me? David, David, can you ask? Your yeah, I, I saw in your literature that you uh, served as a union delegate. I'm also a union delegate. I was just curious what union you CWA. were part of. CWA, the Writers Guild. Um, when I worked for the Fight for 15, myself and my um, colleagues, we unionized. Um, and I was unanimously voted a delegate. Um, and I was a part of um, negotiating our very first contract traveling between Missouri and Washington, D.C. for mediation and negotiations around it all, but CWA. All right. Thank uh, you. CWA. Um, thank you, Slovena, and, uh, and we appreciate your time. Uh, we'll go on to the next candidate, yeah. and Ms. Faye Hill is going to um, speak with Lil, uh, LaToya Benjamin. Um, go ahead, Ms. Hill. Oh, hi, LaToya. You just joined us. Would you mind introducing yourself? 
and give some a little a, a little bio of your yourself, but they could short and sweet. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Thank you all for putting this event together. And I, I'm sorry for being late. There's another uh, meeting, dozens of meetings happening at the same time. And I, uh, I do have to jump off. But uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Latoya Benjamin. For those of you that don't know me, uh, you know, I'm a lifetime resident here in Southeast Queens. And I am running as uh, one of the candidates here in the 31st District. I'm really excited about the opportunity. Uh, for the past four years, I've served as a director of economic development within the state legislature that oversees this district. Uh, prior to that, I served three years uh, with the first progressive district attorney here in New York City. That's the late and great uh, Kenneth Thompson. Um, I grew up uh, in this community my entire life. I went through the CUNY uh, institutions. I got my associates, bachelor's and master's through CUNY. Um, and I've been a, a community organizer and an advocate for our community for just as long, for over 20 years. Uh, I served as an intern with um, Congressman meets and I've also served as the outreach director for the National Action uh, Network Second Chance program. Uh, just recently this year I ran, uh, you know, my foundation is on criminal justice uh, and economic development and social mobility. Uh, this year I ran for a judicial right delegate where we'll I received over 6,000 um, of the vote for judicial delegate, which is a position that allows us to vote for our Supreme Court justices here in, um, in Queens County. Um, so I'm excited about uh, running as a candidate for our district because I believe there's so much more that we can do. There's so many changes that's happening and challenges that's happening within our district due to COVID and so many uh, and so many other variables. And I believe that I'm the best candidate uh, to fight for our lived experiences and to connect the dots in terms of policy um, and local advocacy. And look forward to working with you all. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Benjamin. Um, there's a few questions in the chat and uh, one of them I like to approach uh, Richard because we have, um, we have addressed some of the uh, concerns with the community. And there's a question I just saw from uh, Crystal uh, Brown, but in the chat here. Chat is going so fast, I can't even find it. Crystal, would you like to voice your question to Ms. Uh, Benjamin, please? Crystal? Yes, thank you, Faye. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Benjamin. Um, my question is really for all of the, the candidates if you could please describe the most significant accomplishment to date that prepares you for the city council seat. The one thing you think is the most persuasive for voters to know about what you've accomplished um, in your public service. Thank you so much. Are you directing it to Ms. Benjamin? Or, because we're going in order of the, uh, the candidates. The, the yes, candidate. yes to Ms. Benjamin. Benjamin. Ms. Benjamin, would you mind answering that, please? Yeah, awesome. Thank you for the question. Um, I think first, uh, one of my major accomplishments that I was excited uh, about launching, uh, one is when in the uh, Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, um, I was responsible for putting a, a program together around entrepreneurship and reentry. When we talk about gang violence and gun violence and, and, and massive violence, especially in the Rockaways, a lot of times we don't understand that um, mass joblessness and unemployment has a, a high correlation uh, with gun violence. And a lot of times we talk about, you know, job placement and job opportunities, but a lot of men and women that come home from our prisons, our state and federal prisons, they have a lot of certifications and skills. So no one talks about having these young men, these men and women actually uh, start and operate their own businesses where they don't have to worry about uh, ban the box, which was another uh, accomplishment that I was a part of, which is the ban the box legislation um, that required um, that didn't allow people who are formally convicted to check off the box that they were convicted for a job. So I was responsible for that. Um, and then also just finding innovative ways to create, to fund programs. So when we talk about addressing a lot of the issues and the disparities that exist in our community, the, the issue is always funding. So I've been very successful at being strategic about allocating, um, getting various allocation of resources to fund these various programs. For example, uh, with the programs, and I was bringing that information back into Queens because the DA's office, the Queens DA's office was actually my first job at, in summer youth here in Southeast Queens. But a lot of times, what uh, some communities do, huh? Just yeah. two, minutes, two minutes per response oh. so we can get yeah. the other questions. Okay, in. so that, I would say that, but 
There's other ways that you can fund. You can use money in various agencies, not only the NYPD to fund community programs, and I was successful at doing that. The other uh, project in terms of uh, my role as economic development is that I was responsible for launching and creating the framework that exists in Southeast Queens, which is now uh, referred to as the JFK Redevelopment Advisory Council, where I organize day and night throughout this community. Victoria, you're way over. Let's try to keep okay. it to two minutes per response so we can get other questions in. We got some okay. other questions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Benjamin, you mentioned about economic development and I have a problem since the COVID-19 that there was a big disparity between, you know, the Southeast Queens area where we there's no hospitals and, um, you know, not enough clinics or anything that uh, our people, the se especially the seniors, mm -hmm. are, have access to. How would you address it and, uh, and what, would, would, uh, what would bring to Southeast Queens? Um, yes, thank, you. thank you for that question. So yes, um, of course, uh, healthcare is, is definitely important now. For our, our district was the first place where the COVID pandemic broke out. Um, and there's tremendous opportunity to create more uh, health development um, centers in our community. And one is by leveraging some of the existing policies that exist. Um, one of them is called economic opportunity zones, which most of the community may or may not know is that half of the Rockaways is an economic opportunity zone. And it's a tool that the local community groups can leverage to bring in more financing for uh, for various community development infrastructure like hospitals like trauma centers and there's because there's tons of money out there at the federal level and the private level to address the issue of COVID strategically with a city council candidate that understands policy we can definitely uh, implement the right projects to get that done to address healthcare infrastructure Ms. Hill. Okay your last question uh, what uh, position would you take if you become a, a council member? And what position, what chair would you like to uh, address? I guess, I guess the economic development. Is there another one you could think about? Uh, def definitely uh, land use, uh, small business, and the Committee of State and Federal Policy, because it's going to be important that whoever serves at the local level understands policy at the federal, state, and local level to uh, close some, to see if they could be creative to close some of the deficit gaps that exist here in, in New York City. Okay, thank you, Ms. Benjamin. Thank and you, I Ms. Hello, I pass it over to David, to Richard. Um, okay, Mr. McDonald, you're up. And, I, and Mr. McDonald is going to be talking with Manny Silva. Manny, are you there? Manny? Yes, I am here. Hello, I appreciate you accommodating my uh, schedule. Good evening, Manny. How's everything? Everything is incredible. I can't complain. Good, okay. good. Okay, you got uh, three minutes to do an introduction. <sighs> good evening, everybody. My name is Manny Silva. I'm running for city council, and I'm running for city council because I believe that we deserve better. We deserve more. There is a whole pie on the table, and right now we're just getting crumbs. For the last three years, I was the chief of staff for council member Donovan Richards, and for 10 years, I've been doing community work in the Rockaways, and in Southeast Queens. Right now, we are fighting for the soul of our city. We can either keep doing things the way we're doing them, or we can try to be a little more bold, have a little more political courage, and be a little more independent in how we're thinking, and make sure that our community is getting everything that it needs. We're gonna fight for dignified housing for all. We're gonna fight for a public safety system that has empathy at its core. And we're gonna fight for equity in our educational system. I've worked for FEMA right after Sandy doing congressional affairs. I've organized youth with the community voices heard around participatory budgeting, which is a process where you get to decide how your tax dollars get spent. I've worked, I've converted traditional businesses into worker-owned businesses under the worker-owned Rockaway Cooperatives Project. And I've also been on community board 14, I started my own 501c3, and I managed the Far Rockaway Arbor Nonprofit Coalition. And then I became the chief of staff for Councilmember Richards. I know that we need a fighter for our district. I know that we've been neglected. Councilmember Richards did a lot of progress in the last seven years, but you can't repair 40 years of neglect or 50 years of neglect in seven years. We got to keep going, we got to keep building on the progress, and we got to take our city forward to make sure that we're getting looked out for. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
first question what would you what's your plan to improve the quality of life in council district 31 so first uh we have to look at the budget and i do want to uh, mm -hmm. um so we have to look at the city budget but before we even look at the budget i want to take it a step back in my the the message of our campaign and the foundation of our campaign is people power we want to empower the people, we want to educate our people, and we want our people to fight with us. We're going to have co-governance. We're going to um, focus on building black businesses by partnering with the small business services, putting some discretionary funding there, having them come and do a program in our district that will allow people to build that foundation and give them seed money. We're going to focus on organizing the Spanish-speaking community, which right now doesn't understand the kind of power that they have. We're gonna help them build that power and understand the resources that are available to us. We're also going to start a mentorship program. And the mentorship program, the goal is for us to mentor 100 young people within the first term. We're also going to um, start co-governance. On each side of the district, we're gonna start a district council, a working group that is going to help us on land use decisions, gonna help work with us on discretionary decisions and overall all of these things are going to improve the quality of life they're going to give you more power and they're going to allow us to govern together and then we're going to look at the budget and go line by line and make sure that youth programs aren't being cut and sanitation programs aren't being cut and parks aren't being cut there are other okay places that are being cut. uh second question i'm taking one from the chat uh what do you feel What's your feelings on the 116th precinct? I believe that the 116th precinct is extremely important to our communities. Uh, and not just because they're going to allow, the 116th precinct was going to allow police to respond uh, quicker to incidents, but because our communities and the people that built the foundation of our communities fought for it for decades, and then they finally secured it and because we didn't have uh, an organized force, the mayor was able to just pluck it right out and uh, put it where he wanted and not even give a real, not even give a real excuse and not even real, really give anything in its place. They just said, nope, you wanna fight for rights? You wanna fight for uh, police to not abuse us? Nope. And they took $90 million and then sprinkled a little bit of money on um, a community center, not even on our district. So I believe that we need the 116th precinct, the 105 precinct covers too much area. And I, I think we can do it with a community focus so that we're building relationships with the police as we bring in a new precinct into okay. our- Okay, very good. Third, this is my third and final question. What council committee would you like to serve on? So like Latoya Benjamin, uh, I would like to be on the land use uh, committee. The land use committee is a large committee. And I think it's very important as we have projects coming to our district that we leverage our power, we leverage our position to make sure that we're getting more resources for our district. I'm the only candidate so far that has publicly said they're not taking any real estate developer money. And I'm also the only candidate that can start on day one and know how the land use process works. I know how uh, to negotiate in land use and using our leverage. So uh, that is the committee I would wanna be on and I would wanna chair. As well as on the side, I'd like to be on the budget negotiation team. Okay, Richard, back to you. Um, there's time for one more question for Manny and I'll pull it out of the chat. Mill and Taylor, uh, wants to know how you would legislate um, or how you would run your office differently um, from former council member uh, Donovan Richards, who you previously worked for. So in our office, we are, what we'll do, and so I did run council member Richards operations for three years where we built a phenomenal team. We were very responsive and we were able to um, provide services to the entire district. But what I would do differently under my full command, I would, have a look at the, the office as more of a, uh, a nonprofit and a government entity coming together. 
and we will have a project manager that will take our equity, equity through people power agenda and make it a reality. Who will do that program I mentioned um, where we're focused on building black business, who will help us administer some Thank mentorship you, programs with nonprofits and CBOs. And that's how we would, uh, we're, we're gonna have a whole different perspective on how we approach city council, but we're still gonna be as responsive and as strong as we can be. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. Thank um, you. I saw that uh, assembly member uh, Khalil Anderson joined us um, and when elected officials join us, we um, invite them to give us greetings and to say hello. Um, Mr. Anderson, are you there? Yes, good evening, Leader David. Thank you so much. And good evening to Leader Faye Hill, um, to all the candidates and attendees that are here tonight. Uh, as Leader David said, I'm Assemblymember Anderson, representing the 31st Assembly District. And I'm excited to be in this party tonight. Uh, this How festive we are tonight as we're coming on the holidays and uh, knowing that we had such a troubling year, uh, a struggling year. This is just a great honor to share space with you guys and, and talk about the future of our districts. Um, the 31st uh, council district overlaps with uh, about two thirds of my assembly district. So definitely making sure that the resources comes home is very, very important in this race. And I'm glad that folks are asking so many very point, pointed and important questions. I wanna briefly talk about some of the work that I've done in the last month as your assembly member uh, and just looking forward to continue to hear your concerns. Uh, so as I said before, we've only been in a month uh, and we've been working to get our offices staffed and get folks uh, together and get organized. Uh, but in that time, we've been able to co-sponsor 15 pieces of legislation uh, that would directly impact homeowners, small business owners, <clears throat> and, and residents of, of Southeast Queens uh, to really help address some of the issues that we've been struggling through. A lot of our small businesses are struggling and, and, and closing and are without resources. So we co-sponsored a piece of legislation called Save Our Storefronts that would directly work to uh, provide relief um, to our businesses. Uh, black businesses in particular are struggling. Uh, we had some data come out earlier from the city this year, uh, earlier this month actually, um, that said that 60% uh, of the black businesses that closed, black and brown businesses that are closed, won't reopen. And we need to be able to get that very important relief and aid um, to those businesses now uh, more than ever. What we've done for homeowners, uh, in my first eight days in office, we had a tour across the district, virtually, of course, right? We've got to make sure we're practicing social distancing, uh, where we had over 40 homeowners uh, come out, and uh, Mr. McDonald was there as well, come out and share their concerns, share what we should be focused on uh, as it relates to homeowners. And I co-sponsored, after that meeting, I co-sponsored another piece of legislation uh, that would bring more relief to homeowners. Um, the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act of 2020, uh, would seek to work with the Department of Housing uh, and Community Renewal uh, to provide direct relief to landlords, small landlords, small homeowners, uh, and tenants who are struggling in this moment. Uh, and thirdly, uh, the first bill that I wrote a couple of weeks uh, after uh, coming into office was the NYCHA Utility Accountability Act. This bill uh, would hold NYCHA accountable uh, for the many outages that our tenants see all across, uh, not just the 31st, but all across this city. It would charge $75 uh, per day um, that tenants are out without utilities uh, in, a, in a form of a rent, rental rebate. Um, so this legislation will really, really work to help uh, public housing residents all across the district. So I am honored uh, and privileged. Uh, I'm excited to be here at this party. Uh, I'm looking forward to the legislative session that's coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, where we're going to be making sure that revenue uh, is what we're focused on as a body. Because at this moment where we're facing a $15 billion deficit in this state, we need more revenue from the people that can afford it the most. We need more revenue to su support our small businesses. We need more revenue to support our small homeowners who are struggling. And we need revenue to support immigrant uh, and undocumented workers, uh, excluded workers, if you will, in this moment who haven't been able to receive aid from anywhere, federal, state, or city. Um, and so those are our priorities, uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to, to partnering with folks uh, in that fight. Uh, definitely thank you um, to our amazing district leaders uh, for having this very important meeting tonight. I'm looking forward to building uh, a co collective vision for the 31st Assembly District. Okay, thank you, um, Assembly Member Anderson. The 
We will continue with uh, tonight's conversation with the candidates. The, um, the next candidate on my list is Bradley Jared Berfaz. Um, is Bradley, uh, has he joined us? Okay, we will move on to Kevin Carter. Is Kevin Carter with us? I know Kevin is, is recovering um, and, um, and I wasn't sure if he was going to join us, but um, we certainly wish him a speedy recovery, um, if it's the same Kevin Carter. Um, is Monique Charlton uh, with us? Monique, if you're with us, please unmute yourself. Okay, um, Laton Latonya Collins, are you with us tonight? Yes, I am. Good evening. Oh, yes, a response. All right, good evening and happy holidays. Thank you. Um, please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and let me just restart the timer. Um, for the candidates who are just joining us, um, you have 10 minutes total, three minutes to introduce yourself and uh, two minutes or less to answer questions after that. Um, okay, go ahead, Ms. Collins. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor to participate in this forum um, and I'm looking forward to participating. Um, I'm Latanya Collins. I'm running for City Council District 31. I am an educator of 20 years. Um, I have served in this district as a special education teacher. Um, I've also served as a graduate level adjunct professor for LIU Brooklyn. Um, also a, a partner in the New York City Teaching Fellows, bringing over 1,000 teachers into the district to go throughout the five boroughs. Um, I'm, I've also been deemed a master teacher of special education. Um, so I believe that these types of, um, these areas have helped me to really know and understand the parents, the students, and the communities, and what some of the needs really are. Um, I've worked hard to support and offset, to offset the school to prison pipeline uh, by working within transitional services, school to work programs, um, in order to give students uh, more positive outcomes um, following graduation. Uh, so that's one of the things that I'm really uh, proud of. I'm also a school district leader, uh, a licensed school district leader for the state of New York. Um, so, you know, this, this what I'm doing as far as running for city council is something very true to my heart, um, specifically when we talk about youth programs and we talk about the violence in the community. Um, I've lost five students to gun violence. Um, and people don't really look at how it affects educators when you actually see students uh, in your classroom on a regular basis and then they're no longer there. Um, so I've, I've been working to push uh, that initiative um, in, in addition to that, a culturally responsive education, um, I devised a program called Curriculum Inc. And Curriculum Inc. was a program for child care providers to have a solid curriculum, which prepared students before they went into formal education. Uh, it also turned into an enrichment program for students in upper grades. Um, so a lot of my work has focused on bringing in equitable and uh, equity and access in education. Um, eliminating the uh, digital divide, working with a lot of students who are in temporary housing, and just seeing the, the issues surrounding the remote learning. Um, so it's, it's a really an eye-opening thing, and it has brought me to the position where I really want to fight for more resources for my community, uh, bring more things into the district to make it strong uh, for the parents, for the students, uh, and for the community at large. Okay, um, the time check. Okay. Um, so overall, I, I believe that Queens uh, District 31 deserves a lot more than what's been served. Uh, we deserve equitable resources in our neighborhood, leaders that listen and get things done for our families. Uh, and we deserve transparency that relates to the issues um, surrounding and, and that affect our community district. Okay. Um, and thanks for your passion um, for, for education. Um, as you know, we have a, a pretty significant budget deficit in New York City. Um, how will you increase or maintain funding for youth programs and which youth programs will you prioritize? I would prioritize uh, the youth programs that, that surround uh, school to work. 
um, making sure that students have a pathway to employment and that students also have a pathway to enrichment and rigorous education um, so that they're prepared for collegiate work and they're also prepared for their choice if they choose to follow straight through with a career. Um, I believe uh, education should be paramount because education is it, it's, it's something that uh, can be tangible and can be really life changing for students. So I would advocate for a budget to specifically go uh, to educational programs. I think that's the foundation of a lot of the issues that we're having. Um, students are getting involved in uh, things like gangs and gang violence because they don't have the outsource the outlets that they necessarily lead, need. Um, working in Far Rockaway uh, with some of the, the, the parents and the, the students, I found that there was a community center uh, that was there at one point and it's now gone. So there's really not much for the student, the children to get involved in. Um, I believe that that's very important uh, for them to sustain and to have uh, longevity. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, I saw that. Uh, Aliyah Abraham from the Black Resource Network had a question in the chat. Um, I'll let her unmute herself and ask her question. Abrams? Aliyah. Aliyah, are you there? Uh, hello, yes, I'm here. Gotcha. I didn't, I didn't hear the, the question, I just walked back in the room. Oh, you had, a, you had a question in the chat room for the candidates. Do you want to say your question? Sure, sure. Um, I wrote it out, so it's all the way up. I mean, my question was just about uh, business incubators and um, how the candidate feels about them. And if they were for them, what location do they think uh, best fits? Well, I believe that uh, this, this community uh, in particular needs to focus on uh, the expansion of small businesses circulation of the dollar in the community and uh, just having better pathways for uh, uh, the community members to have uh, small businesses. Um, what, one thing that I've noticed, you know, with businesses and also with the education is that this is a, the district is, is, has a lot of affluent uh, citizens, but we tend to go outside of the shop and we tend to go outside of the district to educate our children. Um, I think it's important to uh, do things in order to center us so that we can become uh, self-sufficient and that we can also uh, bring in more funding, uh, you know, as far as the budget goes. Uh, so I think that small business will be the crux of our economic development and focusing on our small businesses uh, will help us. You know, I believe that partnerships with the small businesses, allowing the students from the local high schools to participate in internships and training programs. Um, I think that will make us whole and make us strong uh, as a community district 31 Thank South. You. Thank you. Um, okay, I'll turn to um, Shana. And uh, Shana is on the Jewish Caucus of the Queens County Young Democrats. Um, okay, Shana, you have a question for this candidate, Ms. Collins? Okay, I had a few questions. So yeah, I chair the Jewish Caucus of Queens Pick County Young Democrats. Um, I would like to know, how do you plan on supporting all of the schools with improving their curricula, college preparedness, professional preparedness, um, and access to resources? Um, so I'd say, let's say, um, supportive services for the students, kosher food options, halal food options, um, and that's for the public schools and the charter schools and the private schools. And if parochial schools fall into private schools, I do apologize. I also didn't go to school in the district. Thank you. Uh, this is a, a beautiful, diverse uh, uh, community. You know, Queens, they're, they're uh, students and parents, families who speak over 323 different languages. Um, and I believe it's important to add div diversity and culturally responsiveness in the curriculum so that children can feel connected to it and that helps them to achieve greater. Um, I would support it by advocating for funding for these things, uh, creating an awareness that this is something that is, is needed, um, expanding programs that focus on uh, cultural bias and um, just implementing things to support diversity across the board. Um, kosher food options, um, you know, with, within the menu so that everyone can be supported and everyone can be recognized. So I think just bringing in awareness, you know, in, in, in City Hall, uh, bringing it up, um, partnering with uh, community groups that advocate for it as well. 
um, I think these are the ways to really bring the awareness and bring it into the district uh, as it should be. Because like I said, again, this is, this is a diverse, the diversity needs to be recognized. And my work with culturally responsive education centers on that piece. I've done so much research uh, about, uh, you know, culturally responsiveness in curricula, culturally responsiveness in instruction, um, and culturally responsiveness in all elements. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Last question. Um, who are you supporting for mayor and why? I'm supporting, uh, so far, from what I've seen, um, I am interested in the candidacy of Eric Adams. Um, and this, this is because listening to his testimonies and listening to the fact that, you know, he, he comes from New York, he's connected to and understand the, the dynamics um, when we go and we talk about um, uh, community policing, he speaks upon that and how we can work together uh, to be a stronger Queens, I mean, a stronger city. Um, I like a lot of his ideas that focus on that. So uh, thus far, I, I am interested in his candidacy. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to really dive deep in the other uh, candidates, but um, I really like some of the things that he's saying and the things that he stands for. Thank you. And uh, yep. congratulations on running. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Hill, um, it's on I was, you. I was supposed to have Ms. Collins, if we're going in the right order. Um, because some of the candidates earlier didn't show up, um, we moved um, to the next yeah. candidate, who was Ms. Yeah. Collins. Um, yeah. So you're up to Sherwin James. No, I, uh, Mr. McDonald would take that spot. Got it. Okay, Mr. McDonald. Okay, I got it. Mr. James, are you on? I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Or I should say good evening. Good evening, Brother James. You have uh, three minutes to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Sherwin James. I'm a resident of Laurelton. Um, I've lived within the district for over, I guess, about 20 years. I grew up in Southeast Queens. I went to actually um, I went to PS92 in Brooklyn, that's where I started. Then I went to junior high school 192, um, right here in Queens. I went to Andrew Jackson High School, also went to John Jay College of Criminal Justice for my undergrad degree in government and public administration. Did my master's degree in urban planning and management at the New School for Social Research. I graduated from Union Theological Seminary where I went and did a Master's of Divinity. I am an ordained clergy person in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I also am a graduate of Yale University. I've worked in city and non-for-profit government um, throughout my career. I've started at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, worked for the New York City Department of Transportation, the Mayor's Office of Operations, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, Housing Preservation and Development, New York City Transit Authority, the Harlem International Trade Center Corporation. I also passed at Bethel AME Church in Far Rockaway, did some consulting work with the United Way of New York City, and I am currently the district leader of the 29th Assembly District Part B, which consists of Rosedale, Laurelton, and Springfield Gardens. Also, I am the proud father of my three children, Judah James, Zion James, and Trinity James. They are the center of my joy, as they say. I am the husband of my wife, Dr. Tarika James. Um, and we are, we are delighted to be residents of this fantastic community that is ever evolving, that I pray is continuing to go in the right direction and get better every day. Okay, my first question. What would you plan for the transportation issues in Southeast Queens and Far Rockaway? Yeah, so, you know, we often talk about our community as a transportation desert. And indeed, we need to take a look at all of the different options of improving transportation. I like the idea that was mentioned earlier um, about improving uh, access to downtown Manhattan via a, an express line. I think that's something that's worth looking into. Um, we need to look at, you know, it's, it's a very complicated thing in this regard, and I'm going to be very frank with all of you. 
There are many people who move into this community because of the fact that it is not, it is what you call a suburban part of an urban center, right? They like the fact that we are not in what I call downtown. There are a lot of people who don't necessarily want a train station um, pulling up in their community. They like the community the way it is. However, we can continue to do a lot of things to improve transportation. We can improve certainly the bus transportation. I like to think about the possibility of we can do some express buses without having the express fears where buses can pick up in downtown Jamaica and do what I call an express into um, some of the more um, outer parts of the district, such as Rosedale and Laurelton. It doesn't have to necessarily stop at every stop we can do, we can do you know, an express line, basically. Um, the other, one of the things I'm not necessarily in favor of, and I've spoken out about it, quite frankly, thus far in the 29th, which are these express bus lanes that have been created. I think that they're not helpful necessarily to, necessarily to our community. I think what it does is it basically creates congestion in other areas. So for example, when you take one of the lanes and making an exclusive bus lane, you're not stopping the flow of traffic. All you're doing is pushing all the other traffic into one lane. And I've spoken to far too many parents who've shared with me the challenges and the frustrations that they feel when they have to go get home to try to pick up their children from school, when they're trying to rush home because they have an appointment and they find themselves sitting in one lane of traffic, not to mention the financial toll and cost to those who have no choice but to go into that bus lane because they have an emergency and need to get home and all of the tickets that they're gonna get from those red light cameras. So I think there are a lot of things that we can do um, and all options should be on the table um, that are what I call customer friendly to try to improve our transportation options in, 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 in this, I guess, again, in, the, in, in these outer areas where we absolutely need to have that service. Okay. This pandemic has exposed many disparities in uh, Council District 31. What do you, what would be your priority if you was elected council member? Well, you know, <laughs> let me say this. I mean, I hear everyone uses that term, right? They say this pandemic has exposed all of these disparities. The reality of the matter is we knew about these disparities all along. We didn't just discover them. We knew that our system didn't necessarily treat people of color fairly. Um, that's, that's not something we just discovered yesterday. Now, the question is, how do we address it, right? And I think we have to do it. And, and the truth of the matter is, we have to address it all across the board. There's no one area that we can focus on and say that if we fix that, we've solved the problem. On the contrary, we've got to address it in every area. We've got to address it from the vantage point of, um, uh, of, 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 of health, certainly. We have to address it from the vantage point of you get that uh, public, we, we have to address it from the vantage point of public safety. We have to address it from the vantage point of transportation. We have to, you know, there's no, there's no one area that we can really point to, but I will say this to you. I think education is the, what I call the linchpin to all of this, to getting, out, getting us to a place um, that is healthy, to a place of equity. Um, we may not be able to accomplish it all in this generation, but we need to get on that track and we need to get on that track fast. Okay. Uh, if elected, what council committee would you like to serve on? Yeah, I think the two council committees I would really like to serve on is the education committee and also the finance committee. And, and let me just also say while I'm answering that, uh, Brother McDonald, is this, you know, it's been said over and over again, mm -hmm. um, we are in a we are in a pickle right now financially. The latest reports that I have heard is that the federal government has said that they that in this stimulus bill there is no funding for state and local governments. New York City and New York State is in trouble. And whether or not, you know, we're in trouble from the vantage point of not being able to get the fe the federal stimulus, but we're also in trouble in terms of businesses that are leaving New York City and New York State fast. As people begin to realize that they can, they can engage in remote working, as businesses realize that there are cost savings that they can realize that they don't have to necessarily conduct business 
in these high rise buildings in downtown Manhattan and that people can actually do business elsewhere in, in what I call low tax states, they're going to take advantage of that. Capital is freely mobile and we've got to come to a realization where we recognize that and stop playing around with that. And all I think that COVID-19 did is it speeded up a process that was already happening. Um, you know, this is, some, this is not something that's new that's taking place. It was already in progress. And so we just, we, we're going to have to work real fast and we're going to have to start looking at ways that we're going to address these issues for our generation and for the generation to come. Okay, last question. Uh, what is your feelings on the 116 precinct? You know, listen, I understand the concerns that people have about the 116th, and I've, 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 I've toured the, what I call the far ends of, of Rosedale, and I recognize um, that the current precinct is quite far from it and that people want it. And I do, I also am in, in favor of that, of that uh, precinct. However, and there is a however, when we start looking at resources and, you know, and I'm going to be very frank with you all. One of the things you're going to get from me is straight talk. If you think you're going to get everything, we're not going to get everything. All right. We want good schools. We want good policing. We want everything. And if, if people tell you that they're going to get you everything, don't believe them because they're not. So we have to figure out what's our priority. Is our priority getting a 116 precinct or is our priority going to be getting the best education for our children? Or is our, is our priority going to be about business development um, and trying to create business opportunities for members of our community? So, you know, we have to start looking at these options. I'm not opposed to the 116th precinct. I just want to be able to determine in order to get a 116th precinct, what else am I, able, am, I, am, am I able to get or what else might I have to give up? in order to be able to do so, because there are costs and benefits to everything. And I want to point out to everyone, and this is really important, which is this, 85% of police work is non-law enforcement related, 85% of it. So maybe one of the things we need to look at is how can we meet that 85% need um, in other areas? Are there mental health resources that we can probably tap into that will help our community? So we need to look at all of it together. Okay. Okay, Rich. All right. Thank you, uh, District Leader. Um, we are. Uh, I just got a message from Monique Charleston. She's one of the candidates earlier. Unfortunately, she's not able to join us because she um, it, she actually has COVID and she's tested positive, and it's um, and it's actually having a health impact on her. So we wish her um, a speedy recovery, and and I certainly appreciate that. Um, she sent that message, um, but please focus on your health. Um, okay, uh, I I think uh, let's see. Is uh, Joe Casper? Who? Is there a Joe Casper with us? No. Okay, Miss Miss Hill, you're uh, we're, you're talking with Nicole Lee. Is Nicole Lee here? Nicole Lee. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Hi. Oh, hi. 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 Sorry, Welcome. I'm, uh, I'm Faye Hill. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself and tell us something about you? We have three minutes for that. Go ahead. Okay. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I was telling Richard David earlier, I was in a little schedule conflict. So sorry if I'm in and out of meeting with my, uh, my picture up. So my name is Nicole Lee. I'm a resident their district, uh, born and raised. I'm 39 years old. I'm an entrepreneur for over 20 years, uh, specializing in child and adult care, beauty, consulting as well. Um, I have a nonprofit called Journey to Seth's Eyes. We bring resources to special needs communities, um, outreach um, programs for them, for elderly and uh, the youth as well. Um, I've been impacted by COVID myself. Um, I also help businesses get started and uh, secure certain and grants and loans that they need uh, in order to create jobs in this community and in state and out of state. Um, I've been doing that for the past 10 years as well. Um, so I think that with my background, I'll be best served, help to serve this district by creating more economic development. I am economic development. Like I've been 
in business for many years and help other people build their businesses. Um, my platform is education, special education, bringing more programs into our schools. Um, also housing, affordable housing housing, also having us to be able to buy property in our own communities, um, and also economic development, economic development and building businesses and communities. So that's, that's me. I've been doing that for over 20 years. So thank you again for having me. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lee. I have a question for you from the chat. We have many disparities okay. in education. We have, we have many disparities in the education system. Who, who mm -hmm. is up for that make, to make a change? Are you up for that to make a change? Oh, of course. My, like I said, my son is 16. He's autistic. I've been a special needs advocate for over 12 years. Um, so I think that inclusion is very important in education, especially for the special needs community. I also think that bringing more trade programs into our schools would be um, beneficial to us. Not all, all kids go to college, but trades is, are always important. Electrician, um, coding, more coding programs for the children. Also, um, used to have nursing programs to get licensed out of high school. I think that would be very, very beneficial. All in a budgeting, the curriculum needs to be redone. Um, so I think that education is one of my strong points and I would love to serve that in City Hall. Oh, you'd, you'd be on the chair for that, you think? Would you plan I to believe education, ed education, economic development, business, yes, that's, those are my strong points. Okay, great. Um, there's another question. Uh, we have. Uh, you, you said you're. Uh, we have. Spe you're in special ed, and and uh, your son is uh, is autistic. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. What? Uh, um, is, there's a. There's a question we asked before about hospitals and uh, clinics and so mm -hmm. forth. What is? What are your views on that? Because we need more hospitals in in the southern part of Queens. What is our, your views and how would you approach it? We can't change everything, yeah, but I th go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Definitely. I'm from, sorry, I'm definitely from the Rockaways. And um, a couple years ago, we used to have two hospitals. Now we have one. A lot of uh, the people in the neighborhood doesn't, don't even go to St. John's. They go outside of the district to hospitals. So I think that is very important that we have enough hospitals in our areas in Southeast Queens for our residents to go to and quality care for that, not just building um, equipment in, in the hospitals, but we need to make sure that our residents are educated enough to and qualified enough to take care of us. Right. Uh, this whole COVID-19 we had a great big impact in the hospitals and they didn't have enough beds nor equipment or residents to take care of it. So I think that we invest in that and the quality of healthcare will be much better. Okay, I have a ch uh, question from the chat, which I think is very good. For candidates, uh -huh. I'm speaking to you, Ms. Lee, and the other candidates can listen in too. For candidates with a specific issue area, issue area in mind, how will you still meet your goals if you are ultimately not appointed to, a to the committees of your choice. I read it again. For candidates with a specific ish issue area in mind, how, will you, how you will still meet your goals if you are not ultimately not appointed to committees of your choice. Go ahead, Ms. Lee. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, in reference to businesses, like I said, uh, with this whole um, businesses were not were not um, structurally in, they didn't have their paperwork together so therefore I think that you start from the ground up you get everything together paperwork wise and then you start once you start building businesses you build more job opportunities and create more revenue into to Southeast Queens one of the most biggest diverse boroughs uh, out of all of the boroughs so with every entity of Southeast Queens you can build upon that so once you start structuring from the ground up, I think that uh, there's no limit to where we can go in reference to economic development, bringing more resources to our cities, uh, and making it just as big as downtown Brooklyn and, and lower Manhattan. So um, I think that's one of the things that I would try to tackle with one of my expertise. I hope you guys are able to hear me. I know my internet is going in and out. Okay. Okay. My, my last question. Mm -hmm. More equitable funding for community community organizations and senior programs. How would you approach that? 
if you became a council a person a council member well i think that um a lot of people you have to do research and reference to funding and how to get those we into our communities um, is basically networking and outreaching to different areas and different people and possibilities to bring those funding and networking here and it's all about the budgeting and once you manage the budget right you be able to bring take one from like defunding the police taking certain things from them and bringing more into other areas so I think that that's very important in reference um, the funding in, in our areas so that's one one way that I would look at it okay thank you miss Lee I think that's it for it, it, this, does she has more uh, any questions? Yeah. She has a she has a I few more minutes. Yeah. And there's oh, Miss Lee, there's a, a, a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. First, I'm a long time res I'm a long time resident of District 31 and I spent most of my K to twelve education in schools outside of our borough. What are some changes that you will make to our educational system within your pre preview? Please comment on charter schools and the necessity of specialized high schools. Yeah, I just was trying to state that in reference to education. I think that we need more programs and education is being innovated in other areas. Um, we have more tech programs that need our children need to be trained for. So I think that if we get more coding and tech programs into these areas, then our kids will be more successful as well as other trade programs that we used to have. Um, I was a child, I'm an 80s baby. So, so therefore we have the trade programs with uh, getting a high school diploma as well. So I also would try to bring that into the district, into our schools. In reference to charter schools, my son actually private school, I have two daughters, one is actually in a charter school and one is in a regular DOE school, you see the difference in between the three. Um, private school different, gets different kind of funding, which they get, they get from resources for that. Charter schools are also, they make their own rules under the DOE spectrum, but a little different. And then you have the DOE, which kind of gaps off in reference to the part of area of Queens that you live in. If you get in a, a more area that has a higher pay raise, you get better schools. So therefore, I think if we kind of take that from like long it's they pay into their schools from the housing tax wise. I'm, I'm a homeowner. Everybody doesn't want to hear that. But I think if you take that portion of our taxes and bring it into our schools, we will have better school our children. So um, I think that with all of those things combined, we can have a better education system for our children in Southeast Queens. Thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you very much. They, uh, yeah. Richard? All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Is Nancy Martinez uh, with us tonight? Nancy, uh, if, you're, um, if your phone is on mute or your computer, please unmute it if you're with us. Okay, we will go to Pesak Osina. Pesak, are you there? Yes, uh, sir. Hey, happy holidays. Please uh, introduce yourself. So, thank you, um, our district leaders, uh, Richard David and Faye Hill, for putting together this you know, forum and holiday party. And it's actually great to come onto a forum like this and see so many familiar faces. Um, and again, I want to just thank you for allowing me to come on and introduce myself. Again, my name is Pesach Hussein. I've been involved in community work since 2002. Working with, you know, starting off working with community organizations on public safety issues, including one of the first steps that we did was include, was the creation of the community emergency response team out in the Rockaways. This, this team on resiliency allowed me to work with the community organizations and become the liaison between the city agencies, stakeholders, and the community organizations. Starting with this organization, with this skill of working with organizations, I was able to create a broader relationship with numerous city agencies and stakeholders to really work on communal issues. Um, one of the most important things and I would say that I'm proud of that's dear to me is, is that I was able to throughout the career in government throughout, you know, 2002 in the past two decades is really bringing communities together and dealing and dealing with issues and, and really the most important thing that I would say is allowing myself to find the right partners to, to get these issues off the, off, to get these issues going and to resolve these issues. Um, I currently reside in Farakaway with my wife and a family of six children. 
just want to, you know, close and talk about a little bit the holiday tonight. Um, so tonight is, as you all know, is the last night of Hanukkah, where we celebrate the miracle of life. Right now, as a city, as a community, we're going through extremely tough times. This holiday season is, in reality, probably the hardest season, the toughest season for all our families to go through. We all know, we all, have, we all know people, we all know that our families lost, you know, children. We know families that lost their jobs, that are suffering economically. What we need to do now is really stand together as one by using the miracle of the light of the menorah to create an everlasting internal flame for a much brighter future. So I wanna close by thanking our two district leaders for, put the, for putting together this event. And again, to all my familiar faces, the district leaders, to Richard David, to Fay Hill, and to William McDonald. I just wanna wish everybody here a Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy Hanukkah. And again, as we go through our darkest moments, we look, we look to be inspired by the lights of all these respective holiday, holidays to get us to the better days that lies ahead. Thank, Thank you. you, Pesach. Um, and that was a, you know, that was a beautiful um, reflection also on this year we've had. Um, there's a question in the chat from Diana Rose. Um, Diana wants to know, what is one environmental goal that you have? And if you're elected, how will you cultivate that? So there's, I think there's a numer, there's numerous environmental concerns going on in the district. You know, you mentioned before some of, you know, the, um, some of, the, the committees you wanted to be on. So, you know, just to jump onto that together with the environmental concerns, we have resiliency in waterfronts, which we talk about, you know, Snake Road. I think over for the past week, we have so many, you know, if anyone's on the Citizens app, if everyone's watching, they could see how many times cars were flooded over in Snake Road. I would say that that would be a concern. However, there is another concern. As we all are living close to JFK Airport, I think the noise of the airplanes are a major concern to us. I, I can tell you from my kids that, that go to school, again, you know, one other, number of them are in, are in Woodmere. They're in North Woodmere going to school, which is again, right in proximity of Rosa, right in proximity of the district. And they tell me every time a plane flies over, anytime they, they lose concentration for the 30 seconds and it takes them lo a long time to get back to it. So, so I think the two, the two concerns that we would really like to focus on is the resiliency concerns, making sure our roads, our infrastructure is there to handle the next storm, and for us to work on the, the noise concern and the environmental concerns of being in such close proximity to the airport. Thank you. Um, the, let's talk about housing for a moment. Um, you're running in a district that has really diverse housing. Um, in, in Rosedale, they, we, they pay some of the highest property taxes in New York City. And it's racial discrimination because a lot of the residents there are African-American and um, in communities of color, just as a pattern. You have a lot of residents who need more affordable housing because we just can't afford property prices that are through the roof. And then you go into the Rockaways and you have NYCHA housing. Can you talk about how you're going to address this diversity of housing in your district, um, in your role in the city council? So again, I think one of the things that I was proud of is really being able to work with everybody throughout the district. Um, I, I think on the issue of property tax, you know, I'm sitting there talking to my wife, you know, we're comparing property tax with, with our neighbors and our friends that live over a block away in Nassau County. And everyone is supposed to say Nassau County has the highest tax rate. What's going on? And then, you know, I'm looking over at our property taxes and we see that, look, our property tax is almost as equal to Nassau County. Something must be done to halt the property tax, to make sure that our assessment values, to make sure that our assessment values on our homes are exactly where they need to be, so that we are paying the, the right share. The city doesn't need to come in there and assess our houses for much further. And at the same time, affordable, we need to make sure we have housing for all. You know, I've been out there over for, you know, throughout the whole district, you know, working with the residents over in NYCHA, working with affordable housing, everybody, no matter of their income, no matter where they need to go, has to make sure that we're able to have affordable housing for all. Housing is a human right. It's meant for everybody. Nobody should be left without a place to live. Hey, Zach, thank you. Um, and uh, I've known you for a long time. I'm very, very familiar with your work. For people who are joining tonight's debate and are meeting you for the first time, 
you're the only non-Black candidate in this race. How do you reassure Black voters that you'll have their best interests at heart if you win this role? So, so Richard, I appreciate you asking that question. And, and again, you know, just because you know me and you know where I come from, um, I think that, you know, where, where I stand from is most of the work that I've always done in the community, where I've always done in the community has not been focused on the, you know, Jewish community, has been focused throughout the broad. Queens is the most diverse borough in the world, right? We're in the world's borough. We know we have to focus on everybody. Um, and, and again, that's, that's would come together with creating a team. You know, one thing that I stand proud of is creating a, you know, a very extremely diverse team where between myself and the team, we'll be focusing on everybody's issues. Okay. Um, and we have time for one more question. Um, can you talk about how you will um, strengthen um, public education in the district? And by public education, I mean DOE um, public education in the district. So I think that that's also a very, you know, good question. Um, so one of the things that I do plan on doing is putting together a task force on, that works with educational, work with educational leaders to find on the exact measures you know, that are needed in, in public education. Um, I, one of my mentors you know, is, is Dr. Ross Green. Um, you know, I, Dr. Ross Green always believes in, you know, he wrote a book called Explosive Child. We really, really have to find, you know, nobody should be expelled. No one should be left out of the school. There's, when someone gets expelled or when something happens in school, there, in school, there always is a root effort of root of, of what's happening with that, you know, why that problem is happening. What we need to do is we need to work with the parents. We need to create PTA. We need to make sure our Title I funding is there. We have to make sure that, that the funding is there to work with the parents, to allow them to work with the schools and to create direct and dialogue between the parents and the teachers to get to that root problem. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we're on. Um, and thank you for running. Congratulations. Um, we are on to um, Miss Hill and Perry Pierre. Perry Pierre, are you here? All in once, Perry. Calling twice, Perry. I guess not. Calling three times. Okay. Perry. Uh, Mr. McDonald, it looks like you have uh, Sean Rux. Sean, are you with us? Yes, good evening. I'm here. Good evening. So, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for this event. Thank you to district leaders Richard, Faye, and William for putting this amazing forum together. Once again, my name is Dr. Sean Rux. I'm an educational advocate. I am the children we serve, and, and I truly believe that there is power in education, and I believe in that power. You know, education to me is the gateway to the world. It's the answer to all of our questions as well as our dreams. And anyone who knows me knows my mantra, education saves lives. I say that, I believe that, and I'm a living testament of that because education saved my life. And I've been pouring into marginalized communities for decades because of that. I've served as a teacher, a dean, an assistant principal. And during my tenure as a principal, we, we've made so many wonderful strides, which was actually featured nationally and internationally on all media networks just for the work we did. And I currently serve as a deputy superintendent in District 29. I've, I've heard from a lot of my competitors this evening and, and speaking about education. And I definitely applaud that. But there is no denying that my very profession right now is putting the children of Southeast Queens first. And, and there are also some who are currently educators, but none of them have led or managed. And, and I'm the only one here who's really able to truly manage putting education first for our children. And I've been fighting and I will continue to fight. You know, I, I have an older brother. He's, he's, he's one year older than I am. We, we grew up in the same house. We share the same clothes, you know, we went to the same schools. I wasn't any better than my brother, but, but education was not a priority for him. You know, my brother went to prison and I went to college. And, and my life's work has really been to ensure that my brother and, and those 
who have similar situations end up with a real chance and opportunity for success. You know, education is really the answer of to, to, to everything, you know, but in all transparency, you know, back in March when we had our first wave of the COVID virus, I became infected. And, you know, I endured 26 days of hell as a result of that. You know, I couldn't hug my kids. I couldn't, couldn't hug my wife. It was, it was this completely horrible experience, you know. And, and as an educator, also seeing my colleagues pass away, text message, emails of colleagues who are just gone. However, in spite of that, you know, what I was going through, the pain I was feeling, it just didn't compare to, to what others were going through. And, and we know that inequities already existed, but COVID to me was like a magnifying glass on those inequities that have been plaguing our communities for far too long. I call it the great multiplier. And, and while sitting at home with COVID, I just, I couldn't shake this feeling in the pit of my stomach, this, this desire to just get out there and do more to support our community. And that's what really inspired me to run. You know, and as an educator, I spent decades focusing on educating children, focusing on educating the future. But it's, but it's so much more necessary and urgent to now focus on educating the community. And I'm talking about the entire community. And that's what my campaign's about. It's that simple. Education saves lives. But not just education in the sense of going into a school, sitting in a classroom, 30 children with a teacher. But education regarding every aspect of our lives. I'm, I'm sorry? Just a time check if you wanted to just wrap up your introduction. Okay, I'll, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap up and yield the questions. I mean, there's so much more I could say, but I know there's some wonderful questions out there, and I'll take those as well. Mr. McDonald, are you there? I think he's having uh, some technical uh, difficulties there. Okay, you got me now? Yep, we got you. Okay, Dr. Ruggs, first yes, question. Uh, what is your position on mail control of the New York City school system? Yeah, mail control is, is you know, we know it's set to, set to end uh, in, in 2022. And really, look, mayor control offers efficiency over the, the fractured nature and how the system was managed in the past. But it really assumes that there's this one size fits all ideology. It assumes that what will work in Park Slope will also work in Far Rockaway. But that's that's really not the case. You know, mayor control as it currently exists is really undemocratic and, and provides no real checks and balances to autocratic rule. You know, we, we speak often about parents as partners and empowering them to join our system in the decision-making process. However, there are so many uh, educational policies and decisions that are made that really lack sufficient input from parents, right? So I, I personally believe that we can, we can do a better job. You know, I feel like uh, we can go back and revisit some of the strategies that used to be in place before, but we need to create a board, right, that could have members of the mayor's cabinet, but also have district leaders, CEC representatives, community members, et cetera, who can, who can work together to really make the best decisions on behalf of the children uh, that they serve. Okay. Uh, I want to revisit a question also with you, Dr. Rux. Uh, it's about the property taxes and housing disparities in our district what would be your solution? Well, we, we definitely have too many people paying, paying too, too high taxes. You know, we, we, we continue to talk about equity and access for all. But, you know, when, when I think about it, it's almost like it's like this boogeyman. It's like this thing that, that doesn't exist. It just, it just really doesn't exist. So we can't have so many people paying um, high tax amounts, but then not really receiving uh, the, the the resources that they need to successfully, you know, uh, handle handle their business and take care of their families. You know, we're we're already in a, a this this crazy um, financial fiscal crisis, and we need to do a better job of of um, tear taxing brackets and 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 providing other ways to support families as opposed to continuously taxing. So we definitely need to, to really bring people to the table and tax secondary residents of the rich, especially instead of the non-resident. Okay, next question. Uh, D 
the uh, commercial strips in uh, Southeast Queens and Far Rockaway, what would be your solution or input? I ask that because I notice a lot of people in Southeast Queens shops on Long Island. How do we get them back? Well, well, look, we know we know small businesses bring jobs, and it also brings money to to our system. And we got to support our own. We really got to support our own. There's there's wonderful businesses in in Southeast Queens that um, you know that that are doing well, but could be doing so much better if if people are doing, you know, supporting them. We gotta leverage, we gotta leverage what we have here in order to make it better for our communities. You know, um, there's, there's so many new projects. I, I, I like to say that in District 31, there's so much dormant potential. Like there's this dormant potential and great energy that's just really waiting for the right leader to come along and make it happen. You know, um, we gotta sit down with those developers and, and, and make sure that uh, they're having union jobs so that we can bring more jobs and bring more funds into the community. We got to make sure that we're supporting our our local MWBEs. When you when you think about that, there's like billions of dollars that is put aside for MWBEs, right? They're supposed to go to these minority business owners. However, when you really break down that funding, only two percent of that money actually goes to minorities the biggest chunk of that money really goes to white females, right? Who, who are considered a minority, but that's not really helping our communities, right? So pouring into our MWBE, supporting our local uh, black owned businesses, you know, um, um, and, and supporting those instead of going to Long Island, right? But there's, there's, great, there's great things happening in District 31 and we just gotta make sure we do our part to support those communities, those businesses. Okay. Uh, if elected, what committee, council committee, would you like to serve on? Well, to me, the education committee, first and foremost, but I, but I got to be honest, too, with, with COVID, the way it's been crippling our, our city, I would also want to be on that hospital committee as well, because it's, it's, you know, from being at home suffering with COVID and, and every day, Every day I get emails from my, my school principals reporting cases, reporting cases, reporting cases, schools having to close, classrooms having to be closed, people have to be on quarantine. And we know those frontline workers who are in the midst of this pandemic, like in the grind of it, we gotta make sure that we're putting systems and structures in place to support them and keep them safe so that they can get home to their families every night. Okay. All right, Rich. Hey, um, thank you, Dr. Rox. That was a beautiful Christmas tree uh, behind you as well. <laughs> Thanks. The, um, all right, uh, Ms. Hill, Ms. McDonald, we got all the candidates in with only 10 minutes over. That's not bad. Okay. All right, Senator Sanders, we're really glad that you joined us. Um, what do you think about tonight? Uh, what's happening? Happy holidays. Well, happy holidays to all. Uh, Merry Kwanzaa, happy Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa. happy Hanukkah, uh, Three Kings. If I miss anybody, please feel happy. Uh, I congratulate the district leaders for putting together uh, such a uh, spirited um, forum. I think that uh, this is democracy in action and I, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, let me congratulate all who are running. I have had the pleasure of knowing most of you. And, and uh, let me state that I respect everybody who puts skin in the game, who gets out there. As you know, as you all know well, I have done it <laughs> several times and I've left a lot of skin on the field too, but that's all right. Uh, I respect all of you. When a, when a, when I think of uh, a person who is a city council person, uh, and I did it for 12 years, as you may remember, uh, I'm looking for a person who, uh, I wanna know what you've done before this moment. I wanna know how active have you been in your community and how far have you taken your issues? Have you just stayed in the level of theory and talk 
or have you taken some small part and build what you could? So I encourage everybody to judge a tree by its fruit. Uh, and I think that that is the best way of looking at it. Uh, I will be kind to this forum and I will, uh, and I will say anybody who wants to know my opinion, come to me on another day. But at this forum, I think that it's, I'm going to respect, uh, my beloved district leaders, Hill uh, and David. And I again, want to congratulate everybody running and even more important, everybody in the audience, my friends, you guys are the real heroes. Y'all uh, are making sure that democracy is real and let's keep it real. Happy holidays again. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Happy you. holidays to you and your family Thank you. and Merry Kwanzaa as you put it. <laughs> Mary Qu oh, Mary Kwanzaa. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta correct something I said earlier. I said that uh, Pesach Lucina was the only um, non-person of color, um, and that's not true. I, I, I think there is one candidate um, um, who is um, also a non-person of color. Um, I believe there are uh, there are at least one or maybe multiple Latinx candidates um, as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I corrected that. <clears throat> All right. I, so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I have a question uh, that was brought up uh, by one of the someone in the chat and was not addressed. What do you what what do what are your plans on addressing food security issues in the district? And um, any candidate, I'm not uh, any proposed candidate can uh, answer that question um, on that. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question if you'll allow me. Who is that? Yeah, we both jumped in really quickly. Who is that? Um, so Dana. Okay. And um, Sherwin as well. But I'll start and then I'll allow our district leader to, to close. No, go right ahead. That's okay. Go right ahead, please. So in terms of addressing food insecurity, that's been something I've been working on for quite some time now. been hosting a number of food distribution pop-ups and providing access to quality food to members of the community. Um, I've also partnered with a number of um, community partners to host a town hall to address food insecurity in communities of color, partnering with the mayor's office, um, the food SAR that he has temporarily put in place uh, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, what I've seen through these months of hosting these events has been each week the line continues to grow. Um, we've held this event in the Rockaways and Springfield Gardens and in and, and Rosedale also and what we see again mm -hmm. is families on this line that um, have in the past not necessarily had to depend on access in this way but through um, loss of jobs, through the kids being home, um, doing homeschooling and having a loss of meals of breakfast and lunch in schools, um, there is a tremendous need there and it's something that has to be addressed and that's something that I would definitely want to prioritize, um, even establishing a permanent um, or advocating for a permanent task force that focuses on the food insecurity in New York City. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Reverend James, do you like to address that? Just a short one. I just, I mean, I, I echo all of what has just been stated um, by candidate Sylvina Brooks, but I also want to say this, you know, we have to get to the genesis of the issue, right? Food insecurity is directly linked to job insecurity. I believe that people want to work and be able to provide for their families and their loved ones. People, feel, people who have to get on lines in order to get food, and there are a plethora of these, uh, of these uh, food programs throughout our district, and it, is, and it is much needed. But long term, there is a certain dignity in work, and I think our, our community appreciates that. And so we've got to re really continue to make, maintain on the long term the fact that we really need to create employment for the people in our community. That's really going to be the key to ensuring that people are not um, on these lines and the lines do not continue to go in perpetuity. 
people want good paying jobs and that is our responsibility to create work opportunities so that people can care for their families their loved ones and live lives of dignity uh can i jump in and answer as well okay so uh the question was what can be done for um this not just uh so i've also um <clears throat> i agree with selvina and that it needs to be looked into but we need to do more than just look into it we know that it's an issue and i agree with uh reverend sherwin or district leader sherwin uh that jobs are needed but it's not just about jobs because right now we are a food desert in a lot of different areas within our district. So we need to bring that fresh food and actually have people, let's say people do get jobs, where are they gonna get the food from? Where are they gonna get the, especially in Rockaways and in some places on the mainland. So there is right now a thing called the Fresh Initiative. It's a city funded program that incentivizes developers to bring good food to their development and good stores that are going to offer that food. A Trader Joe's, we need to do things that are going to incentivize bringing higher quality. And then on top of that, we have to do things to meet people's basic needs. We have to fight for a basic income for everyone. We have to make sure that basic needs are basic rights, that everybody who needs a house or who needs a place to live has a place to live and can be comfortable, that everybody that wants a job has a job available to them. And then once we address both of those two things, then we can, we will be addressing the food insecurity within our city and within our, um, our, whole, our whole country, which is um, where, where you see people in need. And I'll say that personally, I secured food for five different sites and they're still getting food. And you know we help coordinate food at every single one of the NYCHA developments in our district, but that is not gonna solve the issue. The issue has to be solved by bringing more options to our community and then making sure that people can actually shop in the stores that we're bringing to our community. I'd like to jump in as well. So um, in order to, to fix food insecurity, we gotta fix the food scarcity. I mean, there's, there's, there's not enough food, you know, and, and fixing the food scarcity begins by expanding programs like school lunch. We know that, that school lunches feed so many, so many families each and every day. And, and even, even now during the pandemic, they're still providing meals to kids who are currently in remote learning. 240 meals are served and, and some of them are even thrown out, you know, but not everyone can afford Trader Joe's, right? So we gotta, we gotta find ways to support our families. So, and, 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 and de-stigmatize, de the, 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 the thought processes around that. So even, um, you know, we, we, we have to, we know that, that school lunch, we know that there's the good food program. You know, that's, that's one of those programs that's still around. We got to continue to support and fund these foods, like 240 million meals. Like, can, can just, just think about that number, 240 million meals served by the city, and it's still not enough. Like it's still not enough. Like there's, there's still so much more that we can do, but we got to continue to, to fund those programs and be creative about the resources we have and leverage those. Like 240 million meals served yearly, right? Yearly, that's, that's, that's a lot of meals served. But there, there are definitely uh, ways that we can support those uh, efforts that are already doing work and expand upon those to ensure that we reach more families. Right. If I could just, uh, and if I could add, okay. if I could just uh, respond as well, just, you know, in agreement to uh, what other, the other candidates also shared. So yes, I've also done, um, you know, food pop-ups, uh, but the way I look at the food scarcity issue here in our district is that, you know, the pop-ups are like putting a, a Band-Aid on a, a big bruise, right? Uh, we have to address the infrastructure, the infrastructure in Southeast Queens. Um, and one of the things that that's currently happening is that, uh, you know, a project, a committee called uh, Vital Southeast Queens Healthy Foods Initiatives, uh, partnered with Dr. Samuels, where we're doing a real comprehensive 
assessment about how the food, what the food quality is in Southeast Queens, where the food is coming from in our schools, what is the distribution, the business district, the food supply chain uh, distribution in Southeast Queens. We have to, while we're feeding people on a day-to-day -day basis with the food pantry issues, we have to be very strategic about addressing the infrastructure, our supporting our local farms, using some of our community development initiatives to bring more supermarkets, to uh, put our entrepreneurs, our entrepreneurs and, um, and business owners uh, in the field of agriculture. There's billions of dollars of incentives around um, agriculture in the federal government that we can be leveraging in Southeast Queens. And we're currently having those discussions at the state level and the local level as well. So, uh, you know, just an agreement, I wanted to put that out there. And, and that's something that's going on now. You know, one of the things that I like to say is that we're not, I'm, as a candidate, I'm not talking about what I want to do if I'm elected as the next city council. We're already doing the work uh, because it's not about uh, who is not only is it about us uh, making sure that we have the next uh, city council candidate in place, but it's also addressing these issues in real time because currently people are starving. People don't have food. Um, so we have to really address this in a real way on multiple levels. There has to be a holistic framework around addressing the food scarcity in our district, and that comes from community infrastructure. I totally agree. Uh, I just wanted to piggyback on what all of the candidates have said. We need to look at innovative ways in implementing uh, urban farms in the district, uh, looking at everything because some people need food right now. You know, uh, we have the Campaign Against Hunger Initiative, the Urban Fridge, all of those things collectively can work towards the positive goal. Uh, but we need to also bring in more um, innovative things, things that we haven't thought of uh, to really address the food scarcity uh, across the board. And one of the things that um, I side with greatly is uh, bringing in urban farms and uh, ag agricultural developments within the city to teach people how to also grow for themselves and to support their families in, in that respect as well. So I think it is a holistic uh, approach and we need to all focus on it, you know, in unity, all of these pieces um, overall will support uh, the, the food scarcity across the board. Okay, that's a big subject and we have to address that. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Pastor, you would like to say something? Yeah, so again, I wanna really agree with everyone with all the sentiments that was said over here. We know COVID has highlighted the needs within our community. We have to think about looking at this issue from an angle of food sovereignty. You know, right now we all know we're living in a food desert. There's really a food insecurity that's going on you know, in our community. What we also need to do is I think there's a key word that a lot of people look at, especially in the culinary world, which is, you know, farm to table. We really have to focus on supporting our community gardens, allowing the community gardens to really build up and also thinking a little bit about the box, out of the box, um, you know, creating more green spaces, using rooftops, seeing what's available and allowing our community to, to get there and go there. We also need to support you know, the Laurelton Farmer's Market is an absolutely an amazing idea. What we need to do is we need to create more farmer's markets, more places for to allow food to get down the community, to get down the pipeline to the community. I mean, part of the biggest problem we're having is even though that there's, you know, some food out there, it's hard to get the food distributed, you know, distributed out to the community members. And I think that, you know, that there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of you know, campaign, you know, I've been working over the past few months with numerous food distribution, working in, you know, numerous food pantries that are around the district. Each one has different needs, and it's really utilizing, utilizing these out-of-the-boxes, you know, these out-of-the-box methods to really create a more food supply chain to the community. Thank you. Okay. Um... Uh, uh, Richard, uh, how much do, uh, the part is almost over, or do we have the party more time? is over? The part we got to wrap up, <laughs> but I, I was enjoying that, and we would have been remiss to not um, talk about food insecurity. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have to ask one question. Who is that? Uh, Wayne. Oh, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Mr. I'm Richard, how are you? Good. Good. I just Go have ahead. one question. I know we're gonna. At the end of the day, we have one candidate. Uh, my question to all the uh, candidates here, um, if, if you're not elected, what are your top, can you list the top five on your website? I would like to see something, you know how you're doing your rank voting? So if you guys took your top five items, that's priorities to each of you, and we did the same thing, we will notice that each one of you, we all have something in common. So 
if if you don't uh, win this election, can we all come together on those things that we have in common and then be able to chase those goals down? Because I think that's how you get things done faster instead of everybody now going their separate ways. We stay together on those particular top five items and as a community leaders and people that want the potential to be leaders and they're still fighting and still got meat in the game, I think we can accomplish a lot more, a lot faster than going our separate ways after this uh, election uh, process. Thank Very well you, said. Mr. Richards. Okay, let's, uh, let's wrap up. I wanna thank um, all the candidates, but most importantly, I wanna remind everyone who's joined us tonight and I'm excited to let you know we had over 100 unique participants tonight um, at this forum. Um, please go out and vote. This election is going to be Tuesday, February 23rd. Um, you're not going to see any political parties that you recognize next to any of the candidates' names. Um, this is a special election. So each of the candidates have to invent a party name. Um, so you really want to get to know the candidates because you're not going to see Democrat or uh, working families or the you don't probably won't see Republican in this area anyway, um, but you won't see the major parties next to their names. Um, this will be a ranked choice uh, voting election. You're going to get to select multiple candidates in the order of your preference. Um, so make sure um, you can just vote for one, that's fine. Um, but you can also vote for multiple candidates. You can vote for choice one, two, three, four, five. And what happens is if no single candidate gets over 50% of the vote, um, they will then do, they will eliminate uh, number four, uh, number five, number four, number three, and then they'll do an average of the remaining votes um, to determine the winner. Um, it will create a lot of jobs for mathematicians, we know that, um, but we have a responsibility um, to make sure that you're aware of this new voting process. So Tuesday, February 23rd, it's gonna be cold, you're gonna have to come out. Um, and I wanna shout out Candace Prince Modest, who is from uh, the NAACP and a lot of other community leaders who have joined us. Uh, Ms. Hill, and then we'll go to Mr. McDonald. Oh no, Mr. McDonald. Okay, uh, I've been living in Southeast Queens here for 30 years, and I'd like to thank Richard and Faye for really getting this club going. This is the Sojourner Truth Democratic Club, but I have to tell you, both Richard and they don't get a dime for what they do. They do what they do because of the love they have for our community. And one of the things that we have to do is support them. I would like to invite anyone who wants to join our club, the Sojourner Truth Democratic Club, to uh, get in touch with us. And uh, it's as simple as that. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, William, and thank you, Richard, and thank you, everyone who uh, joined us. And you know, there was a, a, we need to really get the the um, the RCV, you know, uh, rand, ranking vote, uh, choice vote on the uh, because we don't have much time. To, this is now December, and this is February twenty third because a lot of people are going to be confused. And I hope the Board of, Edu uh, Board of Election will be able to send out information to the voters that they can vote in the right order. Because I see uh, one of our chat said that it was a little uh, confusing uh, to what Richard said he was, or something like that. Anyway, um, we have a website. And uh, Richard, you want to put up the website for the Sojourner Democratic Club? I want to thank all the, the, uh, the running candidates we wish uh, congratulations. We wish you all the luck and the, the best man wins. But as Mr. Uh, Wayne was just saying, don't go away and hide because commu uh, our community needs people. I'm an advocate. I want things done, quality of life done in our community. And don't run away if you lose. Please come and uh, unite with us that we can, whatever your, 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 platform is you can and, and uh, we can work on it I would want to wish all of you the best for 2021 and those who have recovered dr 
uh, Dr. What's, uh, uh, yeah. Dr. Rooks. Yes, he, he, he recovered from it. And uh, we wanted, uh, there's a lot of people who have passed away that we know and so forth. But 2020 has shown us a lot of things that was buried. And um, uh, this, this pandemic was here for a purpose that we can move forward to a better quality of life for each and every one of us, whether you're black, white, pink, or blue. And uh, we just want to wish everybody a good holiday, be safe, and be well. Thank you very much. And we hope to have another uh, forum before the election, right, Richard? Yes. We should try and plan that for the new year uh, before the, uh, the elections. So good luck and God bless you all. Thank you very much. I also, before we leave, I want to recognize we have a judge with us. Um, we have Karen Gopi. Um, Dr. Gopi um, serves in criminal court and that's important for our community and important for our district um, as we think about judges as well going into the new year. And uh, I'm really um, glad that uh, Judge Karen Gopi has joined us. Um, and she lives in Assembly District 31. All right, good night, everyone. Good night, Happy New Year, and Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Good night, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Good night, Happy New Year, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.